Live from New York, it's The Cube, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now, your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in New York City. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm my co-host, Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com. And we are here covering Big Data NYC, our event that's happening in conjunction with Strata, Hadoop World, going on in New York City. A lot of the action's here. Our next guest is Teresa Vu, Product Marketing Manager at Splunk. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So we have Splunk on our brain because last yes. week we were Splunking the event <laughs> by ingesting all the data on theCUBE in Vegas. Yeah. Very big success. Well, congratulations. Thank you. To you and the team, everyone yeah. there. It was a fantastic event. Go to siliconangle.tv. You can check out all the Splunk.conference videos. Um, I think we did 13, 14 interviews a day and then the evening activities, a lot yeah. of networking, just a great buzz. I mean, Splunk has got that vibe of a startup. Definitely. But yet the, the food chain is moving up the food chain to the killer app, which is analytics. Yes. So last week was a great success for us, and then rolling into this week, so users conference in Las Vegas, we had about 4,000 of our customers show up. Um, it's always great to spend time with them and hear what customers are up to and what they're looking at. And as you said, you know, really trying to understand what is that uh, next level that they're looking for around analytics and where they're looking to, to take the data and then bringing that here to New York this week at Strata um, and you know talking to our customers in the Hadoop and big data space about what they're looking for um, and what their future needs are. You know, one of the things I found really uh, remarkable about your events, mm -hmm. not that we get talk about the, the Hadoop event in a minute, but yeah. you guys really do a good job because your customer base is very active with you yes. and, and your marketing strategy is to say something compelling, mm -hmm. new product vision, new product announcement, yeah. and then every single announcement is backed up by a, a big time customer. Yes. So that is really rare. Here, I noticed that there really wasn't any customer activity at the keynotes. It was mm -hmm. all vendor, vendor, vendor. Yes. Yeah, you sprinkle in a customer use case once in a while, but for the most part, there seems to be this movement of the operationalizing of Hadoop is just going a little bit slower than it should be, but yet the big data aspect is going crazy with growth. So the separation between big data and Hadoop, they're not necessarily the same thing. Do you guys see that same thing? So I would say from our perspective, I mean, first off, we've been very lucky since the beginning of the company that our customers essentially just love us. Between last week, which was our show, and even here in New York, I have customers constantly coming up to the booth um, and just on the floor and saying, you know, I have Splunk in my company and we love you guys and we just want to get more. So we've, we've been very lucky. Um, to have this, you know, really the customer base that loves us. And I would say that with Splunk customers, um, it's always been big data for them. From the very beginning, ingesting terabytes, petabytes of data, it's always been a big data play because we focus on the on machine data and making that accessible and usable for our customers. So the notion of you know Hadoop and big data, you know, has shifted some of that discussion, but I would say from the from the beginning, I mean, we've always been focused on making big data and you know, particularly machine data accessible accessible and usable for our customers. Yeah, and I think your customers have always considered that big data. In fact, we just yes. did a survey and the number one use case was you know, IT operations support. Number one yes. came up and then you know, increasingly they see that as big data, big data app. Yes. And of course, you know, the announcement of Hunk, not only a great name, but you know, <laughs> yes. uh, solidified the, the, the two worlds, right? Yeah, and I, I mean, I, I joke, I gave a presentation on um, the 6.3 launch of Hunk last week and I told everybody, I bet you didn't know that Hunk was a woman. Um, so <laughs> they, got, they got a kick out of that. But one of the other major announcements that, that we made last week, you know, to that point was our new IT service intelligence um, a premium solution. So now uh, this is one of the big um, shifts that we're seeing is that customers are really looking for production solutions versus technology. And having built out a, a complete production scalable stack on big data, now we can really focus on the solutions that are going to make our customers' lives easier. So such as in the IT service intelligence. Um, so well that was an interesting announcement. Yeah. So what I found interesting with ITSM, yes. IT service management is a well-documented industry and that's evolving. Mm -hmm. Now when you add the intelligence, that's a machine learning feel to it. Yes. Machine learning is a critical part of your announcement yes. in this new era of using data in real time. Mm -hmm. Do you seeing that same kind of thing spilling over? How do you see the uh, IT uh, SI stuff playing out in the Hadoop ecosystem? 
So you we see similar overlaps at all? We definitely see similar overlaps with the machine learning and the predictive analytics um, into the other market groups. So that last week was the key announcement was around the IT service intelligence, and as you mentioned, we made an acquisition of a company called Metaphor um, to bring in some of that machine learning um, subject matter expertise. But we're definitely seeing it in all of the other areas. So uh, as well, you know, our big uh, yeah, the time our, series stuff is pretty big deal. The time series stuff doesn't is, get a lot of press, is, but yes. that's a real nuance in the times. Explain that piece of it. So why I mean, and why it's important. So with, I mean, uh, Splunk, the way that our technology works is focused around um, the, the time series data and that's how, how we index the data. Um, and that's the machine learning algorithms are you know, focused on um, being able to, to ingest and parse and uh, help customers find insights based on how we're bringing, bringing in that data in a, in a time series fashion. That accelerates the machine speed. Yes. And then Caspita well, is more of the holistic network Topologies. Did I get that right, kind of view? Yeah. So I was gonna, I was gonna mention, you know, in terms of bringing that machine learning to big data and Hadoop, we also had our Caspita um, acquisition focused around security analytics, um, and they're really looking at, as you said, machine learning across all the different data sets that uh, people, you know, in the in the security socks um, are trying to analyze. So it seems like you got two vectors there. You got to ingest the data. You got to be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, you need good software and infrastructure to be able to do that. And then you have to apply machine learning, algorithms, and then you have to get keep getting better and better and better over yes. time. I mean, that's sort of, that's really the nirvana that everybody in the user organizations mm -hmm. are trying to get to. You're actually doing that in your, your part of the world. Uh, is we that are. the right way to think about it? I, I would definitely think about it that way. And one of the great things about Splunk is, I don't think people realize how long we've been around. So the company's been in existence for over 10 years. And so we have that expertise on the data ingest and manipulating data, bringing that data in and making it you know, usable in a horizontal flash fashion within our platform. Mm. And so we have over 10 years of experience doing that in a scalable production and secure way. And now that gives us the, the ability to really focus um, up the stack with these applications and bring machine, <coughs> machine learning um, and analytics on top of that data that you know, we've been so successful at uh, You at have managing. been incredibly yeah. successful and you've built a great business around it. I mean, for a long time now, we do a lot of Cube interviews, oh, we need to see what happens, we got the Splunk killer. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen the Splunk killer yet. And yeah. In fact, you know, just the opposite. I think mm -hmm. your competitors oftentimes struggle to sort of mirror your capabilities, your customers are mm -hmm. extremely happy. You know, every now and then they complain about pricing, but if that's your biggest problem, boy, wow, that's you know, great news. Yeah, yeah so we, we definitely have been really um, you know, successful again in that building out that production stack, which it's, it's a very difficult feat because when you look at all of the technologies that we bring together to build a build a product like Splunk, it is difficult for our competitors um, to compete. But you know, to the point about pricing, that's one of the things that we're looking at with Hadoop and with Hunk. So one of the big announcements that we had around Hunk last week with the release of 6.3 is giving our Splunk Enterprise customers the ability to archive their data into Hadoop and, and analyze it using Hunk. So giving the Splunk Enterprise customer uh, the same capabilities, the search, visualizations, analytics that they've come to know and love on Splunk Enterprise natively on top of Hadoop with mm. Hunk and giving them a simple way to archive that data. So, you know, for example, with you know security customers who are maybe analyzing 30 or 60 days worth of data today, now they can roll yeah. that data into Hadoop and analyze data over you know 180 days, one year, two years, at a much lower TCO than they were able to before. So talk about the um, the Amazon relationship. We yeah. are, we're going to have the Cube next week at AWS. Yes. And we got some special things we're going to be showing. So if you're watching, interested in AWS, and the cube will be there. We got a really special surprise for you. Us, um, that Amazon is going to be giving us an exclusive look at some stuff. So you know, pay attention to the cube. Um, you guys, big cloud play with Amazon. Yes. Um, so I want you to talk about two things. First, the conversation here at Hadoop World, mm -hmm. Strata Hadoop, um, in the booth, in the hallways, the buzz, and then compare that vis-a-vis -vis the conversations you expect to hear at AWS. Are they kind of jiving together? I mean, a lot of cloud conversations this week. Yeah, I would say that it's it's a very great symbiotic relationship. So these three weeks are great for us, having Splunk's user conference, followed up by this, this event in New York, and then going to Las Vegas again with uh, AWS reInvent. So we're one of the largest sponsors at AWS reInvent, and we've seen so much traction in our cloud solution. We're in 10 AWS regions, including um, GovCloud. Um, so our cloud solution is built on, on AWS with a performance. And Mark Olson was clear on theCUBE, hey, yes. they want to consume in the cloud, 
we have, have a the solution day. for them. Yeah, yeah it's so really easy to stand up. It's, it's a very symbiotic relationship. So one of our customers, FINRA, was actually presenting here about their AWS solution, and they're one of our largest um, users of, of the cloud, of our AWS um, a backed cloud uh, solution. So I think there's a lot of uh, you know relationship between what we're seeing here and the conversation about cloud and you know, what we'll be seeing at AWS next week. So you live in uh, you sit in the marketplace, the AWS marketplace, and I, as an AWS user, I can just kind of configure up and spin yes. up some instances and yes, both start running. Both Splunk and Hunk are available in the AWS marketplace. So and uh, both a Hunk is available by the hour, so customers can use that, um, get up and running quite easily, and then we also offer um, Splunk Cloud in the marketplace as well. And and when, how long have you been doing that? It's been a while now, or? Um, it's been, I want to say about 12 to 18 months. Okay, so enough to sort of get a trajectory. I mean, can you just categorize sort of the growth and you know what you're seeing? Yeah, so we've seen, uh, we've seen quite a few customers, um, both Splunk Enterprise customers, moving to cloud solutions and giving them the ability to have a hybrid solution with Splunk Enterprise on-premise and Splunk Cloud. Um, and then we've also seen net new customers in the, cl in the cloud as well. And just going back to um, FINRA, I mean, they're, they're the largest regulator of um, you know, security companies in, in the US. So you know, that gives you, might give you some sense of how large um, how large the, the data that they're ingesting and analyzing with Splunk in the cloud. And you, you, you love Amazon, we love Amazon, but there's mm -hmm. other clouds too, particularly Google and, and Microsoft seem to have a lot of traction mm -hmm. yes. within the Hadoop and big data world. What are you doing with those guys, if anything? So we've had lots of um, con great conversations this week with partners and you know, Google and um, Microsoft, you know, Azure are both platforms that we're looking at. Mm. Teresa, what are you excited about here? When you were at the show, you asked, yeah. this is evolving, the Hadoop world landscape is changing every day, it's becoming more of a cloud show more about something called Spark World, maybe yes. so much Spark conversation. <laughs> but what are you what are you personally excited about? I mean you're you're on the front lines with Splunk, you yeah. got a great company that's growing like crazy. You can't run faster, the customer's saying pedal mm -hmm. faster. You're trying your best. We talked to Guido, he's like, yeah, we're still a product company. So you got a great, great environment. Yeah. As you look out on the industry, what are you excited about? So I've just I I was at a uh, big data analytics startup before I joined Splunk, so I've been to the show several years and watched watched it grow, you know, so much over the last few years. So seeing new entrants come into the market marketplace, but really um, pr particularly around solutions. So the different solutions that we're building out now and moving away from some of those technology discussions and really being able to um, help our customers solve their pain points and enable them um, you know, to drive faster with their businesses is what's been interesting for me and seeing that evolution from the technology discussion to the solution A discussion. lot of partnering too, like real partnering, yes. not like the fake partnering or Barney deals. Or yeah. Like real, the ODPI's got some legs, we're yes. seeing some fruit off that tree. Um, and we're an ODPI member as well. You are. And, and we've been, yeah. um, for quite some time, so we, we were included in the, in the press release um, yeah. that was re released this week. And then you know, we've had some great partnerships with you know, hardware vendors as well as you know, the UCS, Cisco UCS guys. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you saw Jim McHugh mentioned us in the keynote yeah. yesterday with some of the IoT data. I think he gave a shout out to the Cube, I heard. Di yes. I think did he in his, yeah. his five minute yeah. keynote? All right. Yeah, because yeah, we had a crowd chat with him uh, he and he was, did an interview here. Yeah, yeah, he's great. Yeah, and they're very successful. Those guys, their benchmark, by the way, Cisco's benchmark yes. on your new release was really lightning fast. Yeah. He so, got a huge buzz. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're uh, you know, very appreciative to have that great relationship yeah. um, with Cisco and the UCS team. Um, it's, it's been very fruitful, I think, for both of us. You guys are doing well, a lot of partnering yeah. going on. So another personal question. Yes. So, um, the um, the event that's happening here, okay, mm -hmm. that in the hallways, what are the hallway conversations that you're hearing? So again, I think a lot of people are looking at that, uh, what are the solutions that are, that are mm -hmm. being built out there? Um, and really getting to the point where we're seeing value out of this you know, whole big data, big data concept. So what's really happening? What are the real world use cases? Um, and how are people being able to drive their businesses you know, based on being able to analyze that data? Another personal question, she yeah. said startup. Yes. It's all about you, you're the guest, <laughs> you're the tech athlete. Um, thank you for spending the time with us, by yeah. the way, even though we had a lot of Splunk on our mind last night. Um, what's your take on the startup ecosystem? Because how does a startup compete in this market? 
it seems highly competitive. We've been talking to people and saying, yeah. there's a lot of competition. There is. What is it, how, what does a startup need to do to compete in your mind? So it's, it was really curious to me coming back to the show this year, you know, again, I've, I've been to Strata for a few years now, and when I was first here with uh, this analytics company, there were three or four players out there. You know, now I look across the floor and there's at least 20 people doing visualizations um, and analytics. And I think it does come back to solving that core um, pain point for the customer and what's the solution that they're really going to be able to drive. Um, and again, moving away from the, the technology play to how do we really become part of the business and, and drive the business conversation. All right, well yeah. thanks so much for spending the time on theCUBE, really thanks. appreciate it, good to see you. We're at theCUBE live in New York City for Big Data NYC, we'll be right back after this short break. Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now your host, John Furrier at George.